You may be familiar with the concept of a Pokemon Soul Link, where two people play a Nuzlocke at the same time, and what happens in one player's game affects the other player. I thought this sounded fun, but I was missing one crucial element needed for a Soul Link. A friend. Aww. So I booted up Fire Red and Leaf Green to play two hardcore Nuzlocke's at the same time, where everything is interconnected. The Pokemon I catch are linked, and every single move I make must be the same across both games. What Pokemon I lead with, what Pokemon I switch to, and, to make things as hard as possible, what move slot I select in battle. This begins in Oak's Lab, where the old man gives away his prized possessions to a 10-year-old. Nuzlocke rules allow me to use the first Pokemon I find in each area, so I go ahead and select the Squirtle in one game and the Bulbasaur in another. Pokemon found in the same location are tied together, so I give this one a fitting nickname, Blastasaur. <clears throat> Let me try that again. Blastasaur. Every time Blastasaur is in battle in one game, it must be in battle in the other. And in battle, I'm required to always select the same move slot, even if those two moves are different, like Tail Whip and Growl. The major goal in this challenge is finding the single optimal play across two different situations. And in Pokemon, which is famous for its RNG, that is not always easy. With this Frankenstein of a Pokemon on the team, I can now get additional encounters. On Route 1, my first encounter is a Rattata in both games. So Rat Rat joins the team. On Route 22, I see a Sparrow first in both games. When my encounters are the same species, these are known as identical twins. But not every pair are identical twins. On Route 2, my first encounters are a Pidgey in one game and a Caterpie in the other. So this bird-bug hybrid joins the squad. And I really hope this thing doesn't try to eat itself. Linked Pokemon of different species like Pidgeypie and Blastasaur are called Fraternal Twins, and these make things way more complicated. You may wonder then why I selected Fraternal Twin starters instead of just picking the same Pokemon. Well, as an added challenge, if I have the option to select different Pokemon for static encounters, I'm forcing myself to do so. You won't believe what other horrible combinations I end up with. Identical Twin Weedles round out my early game encounters Counters. So now it's time to face off against the first gym leader, Brock. In addition to the other hardcore Nuzlocke rules, I also have to send out linked Pokemon first. So I send out Blastasaur. Even though these Pokemon are different types, they both match up well against Brock's rock Pokemon. Before the fight, I made sure both Squirtle and Bulbasaur had super effective moves in the same slot. So I just need to click the move in the first slot, which is Water Gun and Vine Whip respectively. This takes out Geodude in one hit, and then I do it again, taking out Onix with a second hit. Even though I used Fraternal Twins, we get a very easy first badge, and both starters evolve to create a different, more horrifying creation. On Route 3, I find a male Nidoran and Jigglypuff combo, and in Mount Moon, I find a Zubat and Paris combo. More Fraternal Twins means more inconsistency. With identical twins, I can usually find a way to get the same thing to happen in both games. It's a lot harder when you have to find a way to use both Nidorino and freaking Jigglypuff. They're like completely different Pokemon, and if one dies, the other is automatically dead. Both twins can't be used again. On Route 3, we find another set of Fraternal Twins, Ekans and Sandshrew, giving us five sets of Fraternal Twins and only three identical twins. With so many pairs of Fraternal Twins, sometimes things can feel completely out of control, and I hate feeling out of control. That's why I use Surfshark VPN, because I'm in control of my personal data. Whether I'm on the go or at home, I know Surfshark has me covered, and you can be in control too, using promo code RYLOX to get three months extra for free. If you frequently travel like I do, Surfshark is essential for keeping you safe on public Wi-Fi. By protecting your online data through military-grade encryption, you'll be secure wherever you are, even if you're browsing at home on an unlimited number of devices. Using modern VPN protocols, your personal data will be completely safeguarded. Let's leave the stealing to Team Rocket. You can try out Surfshark VPN today, and using the promo code RYLOX will get you three extra months completely free. 
Just scan the QR code on screen or click the link in the description and you can be completely protected in minutes. There is also a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Get Surfshark VPN and get control of your personal data today. The second gym leader is calling my name, and I send out Pidgeotto and Butterfree. For the last gym fight, I also used Fraternal Twins, but they were essentially doing the same thing, using super effective attacks. Pidgeotto isn't like that though, these Pokemon do very different things. I want to put Staryu to sleep on the right, so I put a helpful move in the same slot on the left in Sand Attack. Then I start doing damage, going for Quick Attack on the left and Confusion on the right. This leaves me in very different positions across the games, and sometimes that even leads to different Pokémon being out at the same time. But this doesn't change my rules, I still have to make simultaneous choices. I really want to put Starmie to sleep, but I get a Confusion into Self-Hit, and then I get another Self-Hit, leaving a perfectly healthy Starmie on the right and a very inaccurate Staryu on the left. Butterfree has to switch out, which means even though Pidgeotto is perfectly healthy, it also has to switch. I switch into my Beedrills, and the right side gets crit. What am I doing with Beedrill? Well, I really want to use a move that perfectly encapsulates this run. That move is Twin Needle. Yeah, baby, doing it all for the meme! Oh my god, it actually killed Starmie. Because of the inconsistency, one game finishes before the other. In situations like this, I'm now free to do whatever I want in the active game. I can now freely kill Staryu with Beedrill, and switch over to Wartortle to take some weak water pulses and retaliate with strong bites. I had two very different battles here, but I've made it through both games with zero deaths. One of the hardest things about picking different starter Pokemon is that my rival's team is different in both games. This leads to some really unpredictable battles. Thankfully, Ekinshrew is a really solid counter, with Arbok strong against the grass type, and Sandshrew strong against fire. On Route 24, I find an Oddish Bellsprout combo, which is nice because even though they're fraternal, they do very similar things. On Route 25, though, I find Abras, and that means I have one chance to catch both of them, which I cannot do. I add identical twin Meowths on Route 5, and defeating the SSN rival by cleaning up the easier Charmeleon fight first, before taking out the Ivysaur rival. Now it's time to take on Surge. For this fight, I decide to send out Rat Rat. However, just because these Cheese Eaters are identical twins doesn't mean they're actually identical. They can have different abilities and much different stats. In this case, one Rat Rat has a much higher attack than the other and leads to Dig only killing Voltorb in one game. This throws off the rest of the fight. Thankfully, Dig is still the optimal play, and I can keep clicking Dig to win on the right and then eventually on the left as well. Dig Raticate gives me the third badge. For my Diglett Cave encounter, I accidentally kill one of the Diglets, meaning the one I did catch cannot be used. Everything needs a twin, so both encounters have to be successful. I do catch double Drowsies and Voltorbs though, plus a Mankey Geodude combo. I breeze through the Rock Tunnel without any issue, and pick up a Growlithe Vulpix Fraternal Twin set. Because I'm playing Fire Red and Leaf Green, a lot of my Fraternal Twins are just version-exclusive Pokémon, and oftentimes these have similar typings so I can feel comfortable using them both in the same situation. I can get a Static Eevee encounter in Celadon, but I'm remembering my Static Encounter rule. Because of the Eevee stats and my team needs, I turn one into Jolteon and the other into Vaporeon. I also use a Firestone on only Vulpix, since I want to delay my Growlithe evolution until it learns Flamethrower. This leads to an odd pairing to take on the fourth gym leader Erika. Ninetales, with its better stats and early Flamethrower, can easily take out Erika's Pokémon, where Growlithe and its Ember have a much harder time. By only clicking the Ember Flamethrower slot, Ninetales finishes Erika's final Pokémon as Growlithe knocks out Erika's first. With the freedom of only one active game, I bring in Firo to take out Tangela, and free from its weaker twin, Pidgeotto takes out Vileplume. Halfway through the gym challenge, and I haven't lost a Pokémon in either game. Clearing out the Rocket Hideout ends with taking on Giovanni, and my newly evolved Blastoise Venusaur twins can take out the Onix and Rhydon with Water Pulse and Giga Drain, respectively. Kangaskhan is scary, though, 
but thankfully, Mank Dude is a great counter for these hard-hitting normal types. Primeape is a glass cannon that can boom the hell out of Kanga, and though Graveler doesn't hit hard, it can take any move from Kangaskhan, slowly chipping it down after the other fight ends. It's always really fun to find use cases for these fraternal twins. And Mank Dude is one of my favorite fusions. Let me know your favorite fusion in the comments below, whether it's one you've seen in this run or one you've seen elsewhere. My other favorite fusion is your mouse and the subscribe button. The rival fight in the Pokemon Tower goes fine, and I actually get the 10% Cubone chance to give me Fraternal Twins here instead of Identical Ghastlies. Thanks, game. Very cool. Blastasaur takes out the Marowak, and we make it to the top of the tower. In Saffron, I can get the Hitmonchan and Hitmonlee static encounter. And on Route 16, there's a Snorlax I can catch. However, since there are other Pokemon available, I can only get the Snorlax in one game and pair it with Doduo. These two may seem like odd twins, but to me it kind of looks familiar. Because of the team variety, rival fights are actually more difficult than gym fights, and the Sylphco rival is probably the hardest one in the game. Most of his Pokemon are fully evolved, and he's leveled very close to your level cap. Volt Volt Spark two-hit KOs the Pidgeot, and Blue does me a solid by sending out Gyarados next, and I get an easy kill there. Things get interesting from here though, as the rival sends out two very different Pokemon. Thankfully, it's a fine matchup for Blastasaur, with Protect on the left paired up with Sleep Powder on the right. I take out Growlithe with Blastoise, and stay in one turn on Venusaur to do some massive damage to execute. With two Grass types out, I can now switch to Growlpix to do some damage. I have to switch to Persian now, but after a few turns, the left side is in danger, so I need to switch out but everyone on the right side is weak to Alakazam. If I'm not careful here, this could easily be a wipe. I decide to stay in and sacrifice Persian for a kill on Alakazam, but I actually get a bite flinch on the left, so Meow Meow gets to live. Unfortunately, with Charizard, the situation hasn't improved much. I still let Persian get taken out, meaning now Persian is dead in both games. Unfortunately, there's only one way I can see out of this situation. I set up a light screen with Volt Volt and then boom. Hilariously, on the right, I get burned by Charizard and the attack drop makes self-destruct not even kill. That's just insane. Mega Punch from Hitmonchan ends the fight on the right, so I can bring in Blastoise to take out the Alakazam on the left. That fight could have easily ended my run, but instead, I walk away with just two deaths. I cycle to Fuchsia City, where I can pick up a few more encounters. I get identical twin executes in the Safari Zone, and a Venonat Ditto combo on Route 15. Now, with access to Surf and the Good Rod, I can get a bunch of water encounters, including Poliwag Goldeen Twins and Horsey Magikarp Twins. Even though these twins are fraternal, guaranteeing water Pokémon means the twins are at least the same type. Time for Koga, where Hipsy takes out Coughing with Psychics, and it'll be a two-hit KO on Muck. Both Mucks go for Minimize, though, causing one of the next Psychics to miss and getting a Poison proc from Sludge. This means Hypno is on a timer, so even though the left Hypno is perfectly healthy, I have to switch. A combo of Egg Egg and Gasp Bone can end this fight, but this goes to show how slight differences in luck can change the entire fight. At the same level cap is the 6th Gym Leader Sabrina. Gastbone does some initial damage with a Bone Meringue Shadow Punch combo. And then I switch to Fear Spear for Drill Peck Offensive Play. Alakazam is scary though, and a Psychic barely doesn't kill on the left side. I know Fear Spear can kill on the left now, but based on how much damage Psychic did, I know the Fear Spear on the right is in tons of danger. However, my Fearo on the right has a significantly higher attack, meaning Drill Peck might kill this one. I decide to go for it, and the higher attack stat leads to a one-hit KO. Understanding the differences between my Pokémon is absolutely essential to coming out of these fights with zero deaths. With no alternative in Self Co, I can pick up the Lapras Static Encounter, and also get a few more Pokémon, including Double Tangalas and Krabbies, a Slowpoke Psyduck set, and identical twin tentacles. On Cinnabar Island, I get the Static Fossil Encounter of Kabuto and Ammonite, and pick up a Coughing Grimer combo in the Pokémon Mansion. We have most of our encounters now, and I use some of the water fraternal twins to take out Blaine. Sweeping him with Tentacruel Surf wouldn't be very fun, so I want to mix it up 
a bit. I do the same thing with Giovanni, having Sea King and Polyrath sweep the entire fight by putting Surf in the same position and clicking it five times. Good job, Polydean. Uh, not to be confused with Paula Dean, of course. At the power plant, I get Magnemite Identical Twins, which is great because my only electric type right now is Jolteon, and I only have it in one game. I destroy my rival thanks to the huge level difference. And in Victory Road, I get my final encounter, which, of course, is Fraternal Twins Onyx and Machoke. Over the course of this run, I got 31 total encounters. 12 of these were Identical Twins, and a whopping 19 were Fraternal Twins. Fire Red and Leaf Green may be easier games, but the sheer number of Fraternal Twin encounters made this a lot tougher. Uh, I guess not that tough though, since I only lost two Pokemon, and they were both in the same fight. In the spirit of Fraternal Twin representation, I wanted to bring a majority of Fraternal Twins on my Elite Four team, so I brought four sets. Blastasaur, Snorduo, Growlpix, and Psypoke. Having a pure electric type was really important, so identical twin Magnetons had to join the team. Additionally, Exeggutor's utility as a psychic type makes it an important bring as well. Let's see if this crazy group will be enough to defeat two Elite Fours. First up, we have Lorelei and her fusions of water and ice Pokemon. She begins with Dugong, and I send out Magmag. -Mag. With no access to the Magnet item, Thunderbolt was not a consistent kill on Dugong, so I had to go for the move Thunder, which missed on the right side and landed on the left. I didn't want to play around a miss and a surf crit, so I went for it again and hit on the dugong but missed on the cloister, who put up spikes. Ultimately, not a huge deal as now my games are at least in sync. Cloister has lower special defense, so I go for Thunderbolt here, but it protects on the right side, once again throwing my games off. Thunderbolt then kills both Cloyster and Slowbro thanks to a crit, bringing out Lapras and Slowbro. Thunderbolt isn't enough to kill Lapras, so I go for Thunder and thankfully both hit, leading to a double kill. As you can see, I have to make decisions that cover the more difficult scenario, even if it's overkill in the other game. Next, we see Jinx and Lapras. Ideally, Jinx would be out in both games so I can switch to my fire type, but I'm not so lucky here. Instead, I go for a Thunder, which kills Lapras and does good damage to Jinx. Now that both Jinxes are out, I can switch to Growlpix, but the Ninetales gets put to sleep. It's fine though, because I can click Flamethrower to kill the left Jinx, and burn a sleep turn on the right. Jinx goes for Attract, but it's okay, because it really can't do much to me. I do get a crit into a last turn wake up, but at least I don't get immobilized by love, and I can launch a Flamethrower. However, Ninetales isn't as offensively strong as Arcanine, so it leaves Jinx with just a bit of health. Going for Quick Attack would risk an immobilization, so I play it safe and go to Slowbro, who can take Ice Punches and knock Jinx out. Next up is Bruno, with his fusions of Fighting and Rock Pokemon. This is why I brought Exeggutor, who can handle both types really well. You may notice that one of my Exeggutors knows Giga Drain and the other knows Bullet Seed. Why would I have the same Pokemon know two different moves? Well, I used the Giga Drain TM on Venusaur, and in Gen 3, TMs can only be used once. Usually, I would give this Pokemon a weaker move for consistency, but Bullet Seed is already inconsistent, and the healing from Giga Drain makes it invaluable. Thus, two different move sets. I start the fight with the Reflect, which will be helpful later, then use the Grass moves that easily kill Onix. Hitmonchan opts to not go for Ice or Fire Punch, which allows me to one-hit KO both of them with Psychic. Hitmonlee is similarly weak, but the Brick Break on the right shatters the Reflect, although that doesn't prevent both Lees from dying to Psychic. Onyx does some damage and gets a crit on the right side, which unfortunately is not the Exeggutor with Giga Drain. Despite the consistency of this fight, I have two different situations, one perfectly healthy Exeggutor and one at half health. However, it doesn't matter, since Egg Egg can take out both Machamps with one Psychic. Bruno is defeated, and despite a few differences, things largely went the same in both games. 
third, we have Agatha and her fusions of ghost and poison Pokemon. She starts with a Gengar, and I send out Snorlax and Dodrio, who might seem like an odd pair to bring, but they're both normal type, giving them a critical immunity to ghost types. The pairing of Shadow Ball and Drill Peck gives me a good offensive move, but Drill Peck doesn't kill Gengar, and it badly poisons Dodrio in return. Shadow Ball does kill though, which brings out Golbat. I can take both of them out, and we're still out of sync for Arbok and Golbat. I want to reset the toxic poison, so I switch to Magmag, who has an immunity to poison, and hits Golbat hard with a Thunderbolt. I'm hoping this brings out Arbok for consistency, but it actually baits Haunter. A Thunder hit on both sides takes both Pokemon out. Now, seeing Haunter and the final Gengar, I miss Thunder and get cursed, and can't knock out Gengar. The Lumberry wakes me from sleep though, and now, finally, both sides show Gengar. This gives me the opportunity to go back to Snore Duo, where the Toxic has reset and I can kill the right Gengar, and switch to my Water Pokemon to do some super effective Psychics. With one game done, it's back to Snorlax to clean up the left fight, and we defeat another Elite Four member. Fourth, we have Lance and his fusions of Dragon and Flying Pokemon. He starts with Gyarados, which can be easily one-shot by both Magneton's Thunderbolt. One is slower though, so I do take some damage first. Next, the Lances send out Dragonair. I stay in for a turn to try and get a status condition with Tri-Attack, but no dice in either game. I switch to Egg Egg for one reason and one reason only clicking Reflect. The games stay consistent with each Outrage ending after two turns, and both dragons are now confused. One hits itself in confusion, and I survive the other hit. Psychic kills one Dragonair, but doesn't quite kill the other. Wonderful, now my games are out of sync again. Aerodactyl comes out, and this gives me the confidence to switch to Psypoke. Surf takes out the sliver of Dragonair's health, and almost kills the Aerodactyl. Now, seeing another Dragonair, I can go for Blizzard, which hits to kill Dragonair, but doesn't kill Aerodactyl after Lance heals up. Refusing to make things easier for me, Lance sends out Dragonite. However, I'm healthy enough to risk staying in and go for Blizzard, which misses Dragonite, but kills Aerodactyl. This inconsistency actually leads to some consistency, as now I see two dragons, both of which go down to one Blizzard. Now we're down to the final two Pokemon, an Aerodactyl on the left and Dragonite on the right. I would love to surf the Aerodactyl and Blizzard the Dragonite, but uh, that's not how this works. So I decide to deal with the scarier threat first, which is Dragonite. I go for Blizzard, which hits, but amazingly doesn't kill either. Since Lance will just heal, I go for a Surf, which takes out Aerodactyl, leaving me just one game to deal with. I only have one Blizzard left, but Slowbro tanks the Outrage and hits its Blizzard, this time taking out Dragonite and getting us through the Elite Four with no deaths. The final opponent of the run is Blue, and this will be very hard because he has two different teams. Not at the start though, as we see Pidgeot and Send Out Magmag. Both get taken out no problem with Thunderbolt. However, the inconsistency begins immediately, as Blue sends out his fire Pokemon, which is Arcanine on the left and Charizard on the right. At the very least, the double fire type allow me to switch into my double water type, Psypoke, and both take a fire move straight to the face. They stay in for one more hit, but Surf knocks out Arcanine, but not Charizard. Golduck is about to die, but I need to stay in one more turn to take out Charizard. So, I decide to stay in, knowing this will be a sacrifice of Psypoke. But Venusaur sees a kill with Solar Beam, so it just absorbs sunlight on the first turn. This allows me to both take out Charizard and stay alive for an extra turn. This allows me to eat the Solar Beam to sacrifice Psypokes at the same time. Magmag is actually a great counter for Venusaur Gyarados. It completely nerfs the Venusaur and can easily one-hit KO the Gyarados. When the right side brings out Rhydon, I go to Egg Egg who can take out Venusaur and does a ton of damage to Rhydon. With Gyarados out, I sacrifice Egg Egg to take out Rhydon and bring out Snore Duo next. I really thought I would be able to kill Alakazam, but unfortunately I'm not able to do that. I'm in kind of a weird position now. I try to sacrifice Snore Duo to take out Gyarados, but Alakazam actually just goes for Future Sight, and now I can take out the Alakazam on the right, and then I can actually sacrifice Snore Duo to take out the one on the left. 
finally, it's Blastosaurus time to shine. How could I not bring my original monstrosity? It takes out Rhydon with one Surf on the left and stalls with Giga Drain on the right. The left side has now beaten the Nuzlocke, but I don't win until the right side does, which happens on the very next turn. With three Pokemon still alive, I've defeated two hardcore Nuzlocke's at the exact same time. Thank you so much for watching, and thanks to Surfshark VPN for sponsoring this video. To get protected and control your data, scan the QR code or click the link in the description. Remember to like and subscribe, and follow me over on Twitch. I stream even more difficult Nuzlocke's every Tuesday, so come hang out. Hope you enjoyed this two-player Nuzlocke all by myself. And if you'd like to see another challenge just like this one, click the video on screen now. Thanks again for watching and take care.